Before I tell you my story, I have to tell you that I haven't worked at Disney for the last six months. I got the gig through their college program. Getting paid to work at the happiest place on earth? Great, right? Uh, nope. I could write no sleep stories just about my day-to-day -day work there. But it wasn't all bad. The novelty of working there surprisingly never wore off. In mid-August, I was starting to legitimately enjoy it. That was... That was until I got the complaint. Yeah, what's up with the additions? It scared the shit out of my kids. I sort of looked at this woman with a what the hell are you talking about face. We haven't done any additions to the Pirates of the Caribbean in a while. When was the last time you came here? We were just here in December. I'm just saying that that fish robot got way too close to the boat. Holy shit. Anybody who has been to Disney World should know that there is no fish animatronic in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. I cashed the woman out. I was working at the shop outside the ride, and then called my supervisor over the walkie-talkie and told her what she told me. Wait, what? Fuck. I'll be right over. Go to the nearest break room. I did just that. I sat in the cool room for a few minutes until my manager finally came in. She actually locked the door, which is so against the rules, to make sure that we were the only two in there. So she said there was something in the water? I told her yes, and she asked me, Did she say anything about hair? I sat there really confused. I said no and asked what she meant. Well, I got approached by a few guys, early 20s, and they told me that they saw what looked like a mermaid near Barbosa's boat. I just assumed that they were high and forgot, but if someone else saw it, we need to tell the ride runners. My manager and I headed towards the inner tunnels that led to the mechanical room for the ride when a woman sprinted out the exit sobbing her eyes out. We quickly brought her to the break room and asked what was wrong. Through her sons, she tried to explain that while she was on the ride, near the plundering scene, she saw something past the boat. Now, the water in the ride is not very deep, so what she described next sounded absurd. It looked like a mix between a fish and a person. Its arms were only a few inches long, and I saw the fucking gills. It had huge eyes, no nose, and a gaping mouth. We calmly asked her what color the scales were. No, no, it didn't have scales. It had flesh. Within five minutes, the ride was shut down. I didn't have high enough clearance to know what they were doing to find the thing on the ride, but my manager was cool enough to tell me what they had found. Near the jail scene, a disgusting mound of flesh was left on top of the dog, but nothing else was seen. Now, like I said before, I was just a normal worker, so I don't know about any investigations they did about the Pirates of the Caribbean incident, but I do know when the next fucked up thing happened. A few days later, I was working in Hollywood Studios doing janitorial work when I heard a family talking as they left the great movie ride. Did you hear Kevin scream at the alien scene? A tween boy pushed the girl, who I assumed was his sister. Shut up! That robot came so close to us! Did you see its eyes? Red flag. I assumed they were talking about the xenomorph scene, and what they were saying didn't add up. So yet again, I called up my supervisor. My supervisor there was a pretty young guy, I'd say about 25, so he thought I was fucking with him when I told him. But he had heard what happened at the pirate's ride, so he quickly took me seriously. What did it look like? Fuck, I had to practically chase this family down to stop them. They acted like I was accusing them of doing something wrong when I asked them what happened. We didn't touch any of the props, sir, the father said. No, no, I don't think you did. I just really would like to know what was wrong with the animatronic. I was trying to pretend that what they saw belonged. Well, first, the slobber was a gross touch. It got all over my sunglasses. A warning would have been nice. I'm very sorry. Could you describe the prop so we could go take a look at it? You don't even know your own ride? It's the... the ostrich human thingy. I was so confused I asked him to explain more. 
he reluctantly went on. The thing covered in flesh, the bent legs, the arms in the shape of wings, and the really long neck. That one. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry. We'll take a look. I felt very uneasy, so I got away from them as quickly as I could and told my supervisor what they said. He told me that he would handle it and to get back to work. I stalled a bit doing my work so I could stay pretty close to the ride. It was shut down within minutes, and the plain-clothed Disney workers, yep, people get paid to go to Disney and have fun, all to keep an eye on the guests, went inside the ride. But then, five carts drove up to the ride. Eight men holding medical masks and black briefcases ran inside. This was one thing that I hadn't ever seen before. These Disney workers were breaking the magic. This had to be serious. Luckily, this supervisor was pretty cool too and had explained to me what they had found in there. Little pieces of flesh were scattered around the Wizard of Oz scene. But something else was left there. A sticky note attached to the witch's broom. Two words were written on it. We're here. The next week felt really weird among the cast members. A lot of them explained that they felt like they were always being observed. And not in the normal, hey look, it's Belle, way. I could notice that the secret security had been beefed up in every park. I even got to talking with one that was down in the tunnels under the Magic Kingdom. I don't know much. They just told me that if I saw something suspicious, call the suits. People that have worked at Disney know what the suits are. They're pretty much Disney's CIA. No, not in some freaky conspiracy kind of way, but whenever there is a serious threat to patron safety in the parks, the suits are there to respond. They don't actually wear suits, we just call them that because of the CIA parallel. They usually are behind the scenes, ready to go at any given moment. They do all wear black polos though. So if you're at Disney, and you see an unusually high amount of black polos in one area, you are probably in danger and you don't even know it. But, back to the story. The last time I was involved in one of these incidents was two days before I quit. I was on the nightly cleanup shift. When all the patrons left the park, I was out there cleaning their shit up. This particular night, I was working alone in the line for Splash Mountain. The engineers had just passed me, so I assumed they were done with their nightly inspections. But in passing, they told me that a garbage bag had been ripped open and I had a lot of work to do. <sighs> yep. Right near the sign that says last chance to exit, a fully filled garbage bag had been ripped open and garbage was everywhere. After 10 minutes, I was nearly done cleaning it up. Until I heard a quiet voice. Hop, hop, hop. I looked up and saw that right at the entrance of the ride, a log was in the water and someone was in the front seat. The lights were all off and I had left my flashlight on the ground, so I could barely see the person besides the outline of their body. Hop, hop, hop. Hey, sorry, the ride is closed. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave, please. I could see the figure shift. Whoever it was was getting out of the log, so I picked up my flashlight and shined it on them. To this day, I wish I hadn't. On the platform was this monstrosity on all fours in a crab walking formation, but its head was straight up. Jesus Christ, its head. It had the eyes of a human, but the nose of a rabbit. And I shit you not, tall fucking ears. Oh, and it wasn't covered in fur or any type of clothing. It was covered in bare flesh. Even the fucking ears were covered with flesh. The creature started advancing towards me in awkward, jerking motions, but it was moving pretty slow, so I sprinted back towards the exit. As I was racing towards the exit, I pulled the walkie-talkie and screamed into it that I needed a suit right away. I stood outside the entrance for about a minute, making sure that the thing wasn't behind me anymore, before a suit finally came. This time, it was something I had never seen before. He had a pistol with him. The suit checked all over the ride and found only a few things. Little piles of flesh, 
and another sticky note taped to one of the vultures before the big drop. We won't leave. For the next day, day they put me up in a nice room in one of the POV hotels. People came to the room a few times asking what I had seen, but when I started to ask them questions, they all seemed to clam up. This pissed me off to no end, so I decided to quit. I'm sorry to finish this rather anticlimactically, but since I quit, the company has cut literally all ties with me. Back around December, for some reason, I really wanted to go back there, and they said yes, but only if they could do a screening. I asked what they meant, and they gave no context for it, so I declined. I don't know what happened with those weird occurrences. The cast members that I still keep in touch with said no weird shit has gone on since that night. But I have my theories on what those things were. But here is all I can say. Disney is a much more powerful corporation than many people think. I personally believe that those things were a product of someone that Disney had pissed off, or something that they had created themselves. All I know is that what I saw last summer will never leave my mind.